you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks, this is Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. When the Iron Lady sings it, that makes it official. Welcome to the big show. We certainly appreciate you guys having you. As always, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Guilt trip them. You know, just go to them and say, hey, have you subscribed to the Chris Voss Show, our Lord and Savior? And uh, But if you're not, you should, because you want to improve the quality of your life. He has the most amazing guests on the show, brilliant minds. None of them are him, of course. It's just the guests that come on the show. And uh, you should subscribe at goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss. Chris Voss won on the ticket talking to you on those crazy places around the internet we have an amazing young lady on the show with us today we're going to be talking about her new book called lost seeds the beginning it's a novel that came out september 22nd 2023 Teresa mosley sebastian will be joining us on the show to tell us about her newest work Teresa believes spiritual words and the sounds of nature soothe the inner being and defines a place of peace creative writing is her way to release the soul and share herself with the world when she's not writing, Teresa is an attorney, entrepreneur, law school professor, and philanthropist. She seeks to make a difference in the environment and culture through her involvement with community and corporate boards. She's always been compelled to put words to the human life she sees around her. When her children were young, she made up stories about characters that travel around the world and immerse herself in the imaginative words of Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. She now composes children's jingles about her granddaughter and sings them to her. Lost Seeds the beginning is her first novel. Welcome to the show. How are you, Teresa? I'm doing just great, Chris. How are you? I am excellent, and it's wonderful to have you as well. Congratulations on the new book. Give us your dot coms. Where do you want people to get to know you on the interwebs? For sure. The first place is going to my website, which is through Teresa Mosley Sebastian.com. A lot of words, but it's easy to find. And from there, also, I show up on Instagram and Facebook. And hopefully, within a couple of weeks, you'll be able to see me on TikTok. That's the newest place. Ah. You be dancing and singing over on TikTok, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that uh, a link just one more time because I think it dropped out a little bit on the sound. Teresa Mosley Sebastian dot com is where you can find her and her works. So, Teresa, tell us a uh, thirty thousand overview. What's inside your new book? My new book actually is about two brothers, Chris, two protagonists, and they are the first generation out of enslavement. And and they're trying to navigate their way through the world. So it's a historical novel. Mm -hmm. And these it's about those two brothers. One finds success, one doesn't find so much so. Mm. So two lost seeds, as it were. Is that what I is that the two brothers that lost seeds? Yes, that's Ah, correct. My whole family my whole family had a whole bunch of lost seeds. No, I'm just kidding. So No, I was just gonna say, Chris, every family has this. Mm. So, you know, the origins makes no difference. We all have lost seeds in our family. Mm-hmm. I have some seeds that I definitely want to lose that are in my family and <laughs> hope they never come back. So there you go. Whatever. So what inspired you to write this story in the, in the format that you did, telling the story as a novel? What inspired me was I had an uncle that lived in a shack behind my grandmother and grandfather's home. And frankly, we, they did not let us speak to him. Mm. They didn't want us to an end interact with him and when i was little i really didn't understand what his issue was but now i'm an adult i know he was an alcoholic Uh and he was not even allowed in my grandmother's house so i made up a story about him because i never really knew who he was Oh, really? that's how my family treats me they just throw me in a house in the back when i was five and like don't talk to him leave him alone he's a bad kid (laughs) 
<laughs> they still don't talk to me. I'm still in the house right now in the back. They give me a microphone, and this is my connection to the world. Imagine you out in the back in yeah. the shack with your I, I did drink. I did drink pretty a lot of vodka for 20 years, but I gave that up. So tell us a little bit about you. Let's talk about you. People love to get to know the author. Tell us a little about your upbringing, how you were raised, and when did you know you were a writer? When did you start writing? Actually, Chris, I've always written. I never identified myself as a writer until recently. Mm -hmm. So a little bit about me. I'm a lawyer by training. Yeah. I'm also a business person. So when you're training to be a lawyer, you're doing an awful lot of writing. Yeah. And so with that, I just took to doing a little more writing. Mm -hmm. Now that <clears throat> excuse me, I left my corporate job and I was looking for things to do. And this story dropped in my head. Mm -hmm. day out in the sun in my porch and we won't call it a hallucination or hearing voices but the story just came to me because i started thinking about my uncle again and i put pen to ah. paper and did writing oh there you go isn't it interesting how the things that we the stories and journeys of our life or the some of the ones that end up interwoven as we and the use light as them later you're like oh well it's i learned something from that i can use that you know what, Chris, the, the interesting thing is I had people that told me I should write a biography because I have a lot of stories mm -hmm. to tell about things that have happened to me. But it's not easy to talk about yourself, at least for me. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know about you, but for me, I, it's very hard to talk about myself. So what I do is I, I like just coming up with, you know, things out of the sky. There you go. And this is, and it was easy for me to write this story versus writing about my life. There you go. That's why I have guests on the show, because people are sick of me talking about myself. They want, they want to hear from somebody else. So, did you have a problem, you know, since you're well, used your to... Well, writing about you. I don't have any kids, so that's, uh, that's on them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See what I did there? I made sure that they... You did. Yeah, yeah. I control the narrative, so they can't write bad stories about, like, Dad beat us once. <laughs> or twice or all the time once a day usually probably because yeah. you know you got to keep kids in line but don't do that people that's a joke just once a day is fine but so yeah so that's why i didn't have kids i didn't want them writing horrible stories about what an awful father i was because i would have been one did yeah. so you you were used to writing legal prose did you have a problem switching from all that latin and stuff and you know all that, all that legalese terms well, to writing exactly. them out? It was to some extent. I had to learn that my audience is no longer, you know, 40, 50, and 60-year-old lawyers and <laughs> business people. My my audience may be, you know, 16, 17, or 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. so You're not writing I, like, I'm going to sue you. Uh, oh, wait, this is the novel. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you, you, you learn to write more for eighth and ninth grade, uh -huh. even even lower. Sometimes they say write like you're writing to a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. And that's and I really had to program my mind that way. There you go. Yeah, I mean, people read it. People like simplicity, I think, especially with novels, because they, they love to consume yeah. them. A lot of people consume novels pretty fast. They'll read read them front to back. They get caught up in the story, and they just eat it up, and, and off they go. And so, you know, they like a simple thing. Most people, you know, like, I remember when we were editing my book, they were like, you yeah, fix these spelling errors, Chris. And I'm like, does anybody know what? They're spelling errors in anymore. Have you seen social media? <laughs> now, here, here. Let me just let me just tell you this one mm -hmm. thing, though, Chris. Too, because I was writing, 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 and I don't know how you were with writing your book, but sometimes you get carried away. And mm -hmm. the the publishers reminded me that people don't read these huge novels like you know yeah. 400, 500 pages anymore. They want small things. Let's think about, you know, TikTok, social media, so many characters, so many lines, whatever you got. But people don't want, generally speaking, don't want large novels. So I had to also take some stuff out to make it shorter. Oh, did you? Now, evidently, there's a trilogy involved somewhere in here. How does that work? <laughs> So that there you go with the with the fact that I had to cut it down because my story was it just became generational. So instead of having it all in large volume, mm -hmm. we broke it down into a trilogy. So the the trilogy takes you from the early 1900s and the story about the family at that time 
Then the second one takes you to the family in the 60s. So you see how the story continues from the, in the late 50s to the early 60s. And then the third piece will be in the 80s. So you'll, you're following the generations of the family into various eras. And how what happened back in the early 1900s affects the family generations down the line. Now, we have probably, or you have probably seen movies or stories, you know, that are kind of generational. Mm -hmm. Let's think about Yellowstone, for example. You know, they have it from in the 1800s, and they take you to the 1920s, and then they take you to more current times as to how one simple seed of an incident impacts the family going down the generations. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's what the trilogy is about. So you're going to see the, the two protagonists in the 19, early 1900s, Dub and Tim. Mm -hmm. You see how they, how they establish themselves affects the family in the 1960s and how that family at that generation makes some decisions that will <laughs> affect their children in the 1980s. And so... You know, whether it's the history of abuse, whether it's the history of other dysfunctions, somehow kind of gets hit down. There you go. And so the trilogy is going to be called, I think, the Lost Seeds trilogy? It will be called Lost Seeds, the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Okay. Lost Seeds, the legacy will be number two. Mm -hmm. And number three is going to be Lost Seeds seeds reconciliation so that will kind of tie everything up mm -hmm. and we'll see maybe it put the family back into more of a cohesive family mm -hmm. unit i will tell you the first two you will see a number of fractures and again chris i don't know about your family but i can look at various parts of my family <laughs> where there's certainly fractures that you know, may have existed over the decades and decades ago, but for some reason, you know, it's it's still going on to today. For example, I have, you know, a, a an aunt that I frankly haven't seen since I was a small girl. Mm. I'm not sure why. Nobody wants to talk about why she has, you know, severed herself from the family. Mm. I wouldn't know my cousins. I know she has some children. I wouldn't know what they looked like if I saw them. Oh, wow. But there's something that happened in the family that, you know, caused that fracture that's existed, you know, for 50 years or more. So, you know, we, we all have those kind of stories, and we, we may all have a relative that the other family mem members have chosen you know, to, to disown for, for whatever reason. It's a very sad thing. But anyway, those are some of the issues that this story tackles. There you go. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff like that in the family where, you know, people stop talking and things break up and, and no one wants to tell the kids why. I remember our family went through that and no one would tell the kids why. Or We, we kind of got some words about it, but we didn't fully understand. And even years later, I asked my old man about it before he passed away and he refused to talk about it. So it's interesting how those, those things persist, if you will. It, exactly. And, you know, I think hopefully one of the outcomes of, of this book will cause people to think and say, you know, for something that I have no idea why, is it, am I going to be the catalyst for change? Mm -hmm. Am I going to bring this family back together? And, and what will it take? And, you know, there's some decisions that, that come out of, out of that. But hopefully this is one thing that uh, this book, The Lost Seeds, will, will stimulate in people is to take a look at their families and ask, you know, where do we need to mend ourselves and leave our family unit a little closer for the following generations. Oh, yeah, definitely. That or, you know, we can just leave them by the side of the road. That's fine. I'm better off without them. That, that I still want to just leave on yeah. the side of the road, right? I'm to be honest about it and keep yeah, moving. Yeah, some, some, some of them are so toxic. You're like, I can't save those people. So 
there you go. It's on. It's on them. So all that good stuff. Right. So what were some right. of the things that you enjoyed most about writing this book? You know, Chris, the one thing that I enjoyed, and and I don't know about you, but I'm I'm one of these individuals that I I don't mind a project, and I always like learning something new. So the fun part about it was learning something new. I had mm-hmm. spent my life as a business person doing mm-hmm. deals all over the world, mergers and acquisitions, whatever you want, capital raising, you know, all of that good stuff, and which is very intense work. Yeah. And so I had the ability to now say, what do I want to do, you know, with this, you know, as I'm rounding third base of my life here. And again, I told you how this book came to being, but the fun part about it is figuring out what the publishing world and what writing is all about, because it is something very different from what I had done before. So that was one of the fun things, you know, meeting the publisher, you know, doing things like podcasts, like your shows, book signings all over the place. So, you know, it, it was something fun and, and new for me. And also the other thing was just letting my mind go to create these characters. Mm. I mean, these characters are, I, I live almost as, as personalities. Mm. And, it's, and so if sitting in silence writing, Chris, you know, sometimes I can actually, it's almost like the spirit of that particular character comes mm. and I'm just writing, writing about, you know, what this character is feeling they're telling their feeling they're telling me what they want to say to this other character so it's almost like i can hear the story in my head oh wow it's really wild how you guys novelists have that where you can hear you know the the characters come alive the story comes alive in your head yeah it's pretty wild how you guys have that i think it's really cool you know what it is, Chris, and, and I had to learn how to do this somewhat. It's almost like a meditation because we all have these voices, you know, and our mind is is always churning. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. I, I have a bunch of personalities know, in my head. I have to tell my Yeah, mine are mostly personalities. Oh, wow. One says kill, kill, kill all the time. Judge says I can't use that one anymore. But yeah, you're the scary person. You're the scary. Those are the scary voices. Oh, they, but, they, they all get along sometimes when they're not fighting. Yeah, well, you know, tell them to break it up because sometimes just, it may get a little intense. But, you know, you got to quiet your mind down. It's true. It's true. Yeah. And then you let those characters come in and they speak to you and, you know, they can give you an idea of who they are and and they will tell you who they are Mm -hmm. and they will tell you how to reckon to this other character but you've got to get yourself at least i get myself in a quiet place and i just you know calm my mind down and the characters come in there you go i mean that's that's uh, makes all the difference so what do you hope people take away from your books a couple of things one thing that i want them to take away again is the family dysfunction and how to resolve some family issues before it gets carried down the road. Mm. The other thing that I want people to take away from this book, you will see one character uh, struggles with mental illness. And so I want people to understand that it's okay to talk about that. And it's okay for a family to try to deal with it because I don't know about in your community or in your family, but sometimes people don't like to confront it, don't like to acknowledge it for what it is. And as a result, well, that family member may never get help or get the help or the therapy they it's need. True. So dealing with mental illness is, is another thing that I would like for, for people to take away from the book. And the third thing that I want people to take away from the book is persistence. You know, being persistent, being tenacious setting a goal and achieving it. One of the protagonists really has to push to to achieve and move up the ladder and move his community, his family up the ladder. So, you know, whether it's, you know, for, for my community, you know, coming out of enslavement or for other communities, their family came over here as immigrants. There was, there was a struggle of a 
many people in the late 19 in the in the late 1880s early 1900s where people were coming to this country or people were here in this country and trying to move themselves up you know this, whether it was the social or and economically and coming across a number of challenges and are still facing challenges so persistence and tenacity in growing yourself and achieving your dreams there you go achieve your dreams and all that good stuff so as you develop the characters how did you how did you develop them out were they it sounds like they were based on some family members what were some of the other ways that you developed the characters and flushed them out and and found yourself working with them again some of them just developed themselves but also working with i had several individuals that i would give my manuscripts to and i had an editor also that edit the book and they helped me with character development because sometimes I would know what a character who they were what I wanted them to be or what who they were telling me they were but not all of the information was finding itself sometimes on the pages mm -hmm. so through the editing and having vendors they would say hey love this character but there's something that might be a little bit missing in the story mm. about this character. So if you're writing a book, one of the important things is to have beta readers and editors that can help you make sure that the characters and the storylines are fully developed where a third person, you know, can come in and read it. And it's a very cohesive laid out story. And, and also sometimes I would have to put the back book down or the manuscript down and I would have to divorce it for even one time it was up to almost two months Wow! because I was just so inside the words mm -hmm. and the story was so embedded in my head that I needed to push back so that I could come back and see it a little more clearly there you go sometimes you can see it fresh by taking some time out exactly it's, it's almost like a relationship sometimes you have to say can we take a break you yep. Know? Yep. let's take a break yep. and then maybe i could see you in a better light right now i'm a little pissed off at you or it's, i'm spent where it's too much togetherness so let, let's let's take a break there you go i did that 30 years ago in my first marriage and went out for milk and never came back and so i'm probably gonna go back maybe i don't know next year or something so there's okay. that now's your time for redemption chris next year <laughs> next year I still got to buy the milk. Okay. All still right. got to buy the milk. All right. But I'm sure they're waiting. So there you go. So final thoughts and pitch out to people to order up the book and all that good stuff. Yes, please. <laughs> you know, if if you really are looking for a good read about family and, and goal setting and achieving goals and all that stuff, pick up The Lost Seeds at the beginning. You can get it on Amazon, of course, if you just, you know, put in the search Lost Seeds the beginning or Teresa Mosley Sebastian, it'll come up. Also, you can buy it on Bards and Noble and you can buy it on bookshop.org. Also, it's an audio version for individuals that don't want to read the words but want to listen. There's a great, we got a great guide to, to narrate the story oh, wow. and it sounds very compelling. And also, you can get it on Kindle for those that just load their Kindles up with books. So you have digital form too. There you Got go. It however you want it, Chris. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Thank you very much for coming to the show. We awesome really appreciate sauce. it. Thank you so much for having me. And hopefully you'll have me back at some point. There you go. For the trilogy, the, the new ones coming up. Folks, order up the book wherever fine books are sold. It's called Lost Seeds. The beginning came out September 22nd, 2023. You make sure, want to make sure and order it and read it as quick as you can. Because Do you have an anticipated date for the second book? Yes, we're, we're aiming for the fall and no later than Christmas, but we're aiming for September 2024. It'll be Lost Seeds, The Legacy, and start with Lost Seeds, The Beginning. There you go. You know, you should do a book called Lost Seeds, Return of the Jedi. No, nah, I'm just kidding. That's Star Wars, isn't it? How about Lost Seeds, the Chris Voss show? Oh, uh, boy, there's a lot of Lost Seeds there. That's a that's a whole packet of Lost Seeds there you get at Home Depot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole forest of Lost going on there. I think it's mostly my children that I constantly never call back. Mari keeps ringing my phone. Anyway, whatever. 
So, thank you very much, Teresa, for coming on the show. Thanks, Monis, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Fuss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Fuss, all those crazy places on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. And that's us out.